Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome back. Welcome back to the Porsche Good Podcast. Ajmal's here. Good afternoon, Ajmal. Hello. Hello to everyone listening. Hello, everyone. I'd like to apologize before I start because I feel like I'm in a dance hall at the moment. Is that what you call it? I feel like I'm in some kind of empty room and someone's just left me to die or something because it's, it's, there's a lot of echo through my headphones. And if you're hearing that, I just want to say it before I start. I apologize. But um, our apartment here in Bahrain is very empty. There's very little furniture in it apart, what, apart from what the apartment came with. And it's hollow. And this is the only place I've got to sit. As I was telling Ajmal, this is the only table I have at the moment. So I have to sit out here. Um, but anyway, welcome back, everyone. This is a Porsche School podcast, as I said. Uh, my name is Michael Bath. You've been here before. You will know that. Uh, Ajmal's joining us again this week because Steve's away. He's still um, looking after his little girls. He's just had a baby. Um, he will be coming back soon. But we've got some things planned when he comes back. Um, Ajmal will be involved, hopefully. So that will be good. So, what's been happening? What's been happening, Ajma? What's happened in your week? Have you been driving the 912 or the 996? Um, I've, I've driven the 996 because I fixed the exhaust. The tip that had fallen off. Oh, you I told fixed you the it. bracket had broken. Yeah, I fixed it. Uh, and it was literally, it took five minutes. It was, I just didn't want to get under the car before and I procrastinated. It was two whole weeks it sat there. Um, and then I just pulled it up on the drive, got underneath, and it literally took five minutes. And it was so good to be out driving it. So what was it? Just the tip, was it? Was it just uh, the exhaust tip? Yep. The exhaust tip has a bracket. And what happened was in a car park, a supermarket car park, I'd reversed a little bit too far and I'd just touched a curb that was a little high. And it, and it snapped the bracket. The bracket's so rusted. And uh, it was just hanging by a thread. And I happened to notice that that's what happened. Oh. Uh, so I just ordered a bracket. cost, I think, £10. Um, that's and I, I just I, I went go fixing it while taking one hand into the car when I couldn't see. Uh, and that was a stupid idea. And then for two weeks, I thought, should I, I haven't seen that. Jack? When did that? Which video is that? The last one on the uh, weekend? Oh, I haven't. I ha- that's the one I'm, I made a video at the weekend and I've not been able to upload it because my internet is so awful. Yeah, I'm suffering the same. I was telling you earlier, I'm suffering the same fate here. Um, I don't know what's happened to the internet in Bahrain. It was bearable and now it's just unbearable. It's so slow. Like, I'm, like I said, it's like 0.5 upload, which is just impossible when you're trying to upload one, a YouTube video. Uh, twice a week and and podcast which is only 100 meg obviously the video is bigger but it's just killing me here i can't wait to get back to london and have you know super super fast fiber again like i really really do miss it it's so much nicer the week let me just get into it let me tell everyone what's going on ajmal before we uh before we get into our full-on chat um so like i said portugal podcast uh I want to say, what did I want to say? I want to talk about Porsche Good owner stories that came out. Um, Ajmal and I are recording this Wednesday. It's Wednesday afternoon at the moment. This is Friday's episode, of course, but yesterday owner stories came out and owner stories are with PJ. PJ and his 57 356A T1 Coupe. Coupe, Coupe, whichever way you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, TJ, uh, PJ had a really good story. I liked his story. Did you enjoy it, um, Ajmal? Ajmal? I, I did. I really did. Um, and <laughs> some of the stuff that he said, um, and I, again, I don't want to spoil it for people who are going to listen. Uh, it was kind of the same for me growing up with my dad dropping me off and picking me up. But if you flip it around completely the other way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's... So whereas he would go, no, mom, don't drop me off in your super cool car because the kids are going to beat me up. It's like, no, dad, don't drop me off in that chocolate brown Austin Allegro <laughs> at football practice because I'll just get my well, knees kicked. <laughs> <laughs> it's but always I, something, really isn't it? it? Yeah, yeah. We all have those. We all have those memories from a kid. I liked how I liked how PJ was really straight up and honest about it, you know, and, and said that story. Um, I thought it was, you know, like he didn't like the smell of new cars. He didn't like anything about new cars. And then he ended up with the Beetle. Um, yes. And he ended up with the 912, and the 912 story is really great. Um, I forget the guy's name on Instagram, who's PJ's friend, who um, I spoke to earlier today. I think he sent me another message. I haven't responded, and he was the is guy it? that um, sold PJ that 912. It's not Simon Medlicott. Yes, is it? that's it. That's it. Yeah, 
Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 when he said that, I did think, oh, who's that? But um, yeah, just a side note when, when PJ was telling you his favorite roads to drive, uh, they're all the roads that I drive on. Oh, okay. So you guys live in the same um, area, same village, near the same village? Uh, we're probably about a mile and a half from each other. Oh, really? You should, go <laughs> yeah. and, you, should, you, should, you should get in contact to go and check out his car. Put the two cars together. That's uh, a great we, we, Instagram we photo. Yeah, we messaged, We were messaging yesterday. Ajmal, um, do a video. So, do a video well, together. We're, we're going to arrange to catch up when lockdown's lifted. Yeah, um, we'll absolutely. We'll probably get Jack, Jack, Jack of Flat Six Jack involved as well. Yep, do a video. Do a video. So that'd be, uh, that would be a great, a dust, great thing to do. Yep, that's that's the plan. And I, I, I did say to him, "How come I haven't seen you driving around? You literally stones throw from my house." And he said, "Oh, I haven't used it much yet. I just got it on the road." Yeah, no. PJ had a great story. I mean, he's owned so many Volkswagens mm-hmm. and so many rare ones, and um, you know, he's still got his Beetle in uh, Bert, Bertle Green, Beryl Green. Sorry, <laughs> Bertle Green, <Yep>. in Beryl <laughs> Green. Um, but if you haven't listened to it already, Porsche Code Owner Stories, just do a search. Um, you'll see it. It's the episode before this one. Um, and that's episode number 26 on Owner Stories. So we're getting up there. Um, I've actually been very busy during the week. I've organized three or four more people to do Owner Stories. Uh, and then I have another new idea for a new um, series coming up. And I'm starting to get people together for that. Uh, I'm not going to announce it because there's a lot of Porsche podcasts out there at the moment and I don't want to give away any of my ideas, <laughs> any of my ideas for free. Um, anyway, the F1 is on in Bahrain this weekend, Ajmal. We, you and I are both F1 fans and the F1 is on. Um, I seem to have the bad habit of always not being in Bahrain when the F1's on. I don't know how I manage it, but I always seem to be leaving when it's about to start. I'm always, I'm always leaving the week before. Like I'm leaving on Thursday, oh. we're leaving two o'clock on Friday morning and it starts on Friday. Well, I've, I've been a huge F1 fan for, I mean, since I was a kid, but I've never actually been to one um, because my memory of Silverstone, which is the only one I'd really go to, um, I wouldn't go abroad to go to one, um, has always been of um, muddy fields, um rain traffic jams and when i drive up north for work or to see family or anything like that i have to drive past silverstone um and you always have to be aware of is it a race weekend because you have to avoid that area completely the motorways the small roads anywhere near there yeah yeah. i've never been to one but um i'm quite excited about the season starting well i'm the same i've never been to a race um there was a plan to go to a race um, last year, but COVID happened. There was a plan to go with um, a few people. Um, I was going to go to Bahrain. I could actually go to the Bahrain F1 because they're allowing people who've been vaccinated. Uh, this is um, a segue here for you, um, Ashmal. So people who are vaccinated can actually can actually um, go to the F1. Bahrain's okay. I mean, I went out today and I was driving around a bit today. There's not much traffic. I mean, it's just normal. The roads here are so big and so fast. It's like you don't really get – you don't get really stuck in traffic that much unless you're in the old part of Bahrain and you get stuck in the back streets. Um, but it's pretty good. So that's on this weekend, so that would be exciting. But like I said, I'm not going to be here. Um, I just want to touch on uh, Patreon. There's no new Patreon members this week, I don't think, unless I've missed them, but I'm pretty sure there's no new Patreon members. Um, but like I said, and I always say at the beginning of this podcast, if you want to support the podcast and you want to help keep us talking, so to speak, um, go over to Patreon, search Porsche Cooled and become a member. Um, you can do it for as little as $2 a month or you can do it up to $10 a month. Um, it just helps me, uh, helps us keep talking uh, and we'll be using it for equipment and, and things like that pretty much. Um, Apple ratings and reviews, Ajmal, I just want to pass this over very quickly. We've had a couple this week. I always like to give a shout out because people go out of the way to do this. Every time I do a shout out on the podcast, I always get people going and and giving me, you know, giving the podcast a rating and giving it a review. And I think it's really nice. And I always like to do a shout out. So there's been two this week, uh, one from Australia, uh, essential listening. Um, if you're into Porsche, this is a place for you. GP, GP 2100. Thank you for that. And another one, and I don't know this saying. I had to look it up. The Stoke is high. That's, that was the review. The Stoke is high. That's, that was the title of the review. I don't know what Stoke is. I didn't know what Stoke is, that, that saying. Do you know what that saying is? I don't, but I've heard, you know, it's an Australian thing, isn't it, to be stoked about something. 
Yeah, when you're stoked, it's like, you know, it's, it's great, I guess. But the stoke is high. I thought it was pretty cool anyway. Um, there's more to it. Great podcast for the Porsche enthusiasts. Michael and Steve make everyone feel welcome. Owner stories are unique. Thank you so much. And that was from Our Light uh, from the United States. So it wasn't from someone from Australia. It was someone from the US. But I think it comes from surf culture. I think the stoke is high comes from surf culture. I think you're right. Yeah, because I, I just, just think that if you're... No, you're stoked. Stoke is, you're stoked. If your stoke is low, if your stoke is low, you're not unstoked. You're just not stoked, are you? <laughs> Does that, I don't, I'm, well, I'm stoked, I'm, you know. I, I see you. I'm stoked to see you, you know. Yeah. How, how, like how is the part? You know, yeah, we might be analyzing know. this a bit. It's a good one. Thank you so much for that. Anyway, thanks for the two uh, reviews this week. Much appreciated. And like I said, it helps us get seen by Apple. It helps us get seen in the search results. It helps us on our journey to be the number one Porsche podcast. And there's many. There's many. All right. You know, I read something, I read something today, Ajmal, and I think you might have uh, read it as well. Actually, I want to go back to the other thing. I want to go back to the coronavirus. I want to go back to the vaccination. For everyone out there that, yes. that I gave the impression that, that um, Ajmal was an anti-vaxxer, he's not. <laughs> yes. So after, after last week's chat, um, I didn't think about it at the time. And afterwards, I was, I was making a coffee. And I thought, hang on, hang on, hang on, what just happened? Are people going to think I'm some kind of nutty anti-vaxxer? But it was Michael and I had a conversation just before when you and I had just spoken. And we talked about, well, if you turn up at surgery, um, they, if they've got a missed slot, sometimes you can just get um, vaccinated. And and I said, well, I didn't. To me, it felt like jumping the queue, and I, I didn't. I didn't want to do that. And then what you the way you phrased it during our chat, I thought afterwards, God, is everyone going to think I'm some loon? <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. Yeah, because when I brought it up two weeks ago, I think it was in the first, you know, in the very first one when you came back, came onto the podcast. I thought you gave me the impression that you were against it because I said I got vaccinated, and I saw your face, and I thought, oh, okay, you know. You're going to have a go at me or something. You're annoyed with me because I got vaccinated. That was the impression I got from your facial expressions. So that's why I kept. That's why I kept running with it. You know that you were you were against it. <laughs> no, it was probably indigestion or something. So uh, that's where I went today. Actually, at eight o'clock this morning, I took my wife to the uh, King Hamad Hospital here in King Hamad University Hospital in Bahrain. We went there at 8 o'clock this morning and she got her second dose, so she's done now as well. Natasha's got her dose, so we're all, we're both vaccinated. My 21 days actually is up tomorrow, so apparently I'm fully covered tomorrow, um, apparently. Wow. But who knows? Who knows with all these new variants? Um, I just read an article earlier today about the electro, uh, electric Boxster and Cayman. Um, I thought this was quite interesting because they're saying that the next generation for the Boxster and the Cayman, and that's not very far away, Ajmal. Um, the 718 has been out for quite a few years. So I would say this must be in the next 12 months or something, isn't it? The next generation of the Cayman and the Boxster, it must be, it's not that it far away. It must be very soon because you're right. They've, they've been around for a while. And also um, I would have thought they would have gone hybrid first. Me too. Um, I'm surprised by this announcement. I'm very surprised. Well, they haven't decided. But then if it's, mm. if it's due very shortly, then they must have – I can't believe they haven't decided. I think they're not announcing it. I think they have decided. But, but also there's, there's that view of – and uh, this might make me sound quite cynical, but Porsche would release a version of the Boxster and the Cayman just as they will of the 911, and they'll give it the – it's the last combustion oh, engine right, Porsche. Right. And, okay. and you know, remember how they did – uh, a while ago where they released the Boxster, was it the Boxster, what was it called? Not Speedster, was it called? Spider. It was, uh, yes, Spider. Uh, not, no, maybe it wasn't the Spider, but they released one, it was about two or three years ago, and they said it's the na last naturally aspirated one. Um, okay. and, and everyone flocked and bought it, and a year later they were all selling them for the same price or a little bit more. And then another one was announced. Well, the four point um, we, the four point oh was announced recently, which is not the four cylinder. They changed it to four cylinder, and they made a big mistake. Um, when they yes. changed to the four cylinder, made a big mistake. They can't sell them; they were they were heavily discounted. And then they brought back yep. the, um, you know, they did the four point zero in the GTS and the um, Spider. So yes, and so I would always think there would be quite a lot of fanfare if 
they were about to release something and it was the last one, the end of the line, and there would be huge waiting lists for those. Well, Oliver Bloom has said, he's, he's said it to reporters, he said that the Boxster and Cayman could be fully electric, um, and he was speaking to Auto Express apparently, this is the article that I read, and he confirmed that they're going to debate whether to switch the Boxster and the Cayman to full electric power. And he's going to make the decision going to be made in the next 12 months. So I guess that is quite a time away. Next 12 months, um, whether or not to do them as electric. But, you know, if they do the Boxster, and, uh, the Boxster and the Cayman as electric, what's going to happen to the GT4? You know what I mean? Are they going to still keep mm. it naturally aspirated? But if you, if you do them all electric, then they're all electric. You know, yes. and, this, and, it, and in some ways it makes sense too because it's the testing ground, isn't it? If they do the Boxster and the Cayman first... Which is a tricky one for them because there's a lot of revenue there in, in boxsters, right? They still sell quite a lot of boxsters, so that's, it's still a risk for them that they're going their sales will you know decrease. Um, but I guess in long term, it gives them an, an idea of what the 911 and how people will you know like it and stuff like that. And I guess it also ties into the thing where I still don't think Porsche is ready for electric. I still think Porsche has done it too quickly. Um, I'm, so one thing I don't respect at the moment because I think their infrastructure is really bad. Um, no one can lead up to, like I've said before, no one can be like a, t a Tesla. They can't have that supercharger network. And I know Porsche is starting to do it in Europe. They're starting to build these things or planning to build these special, you know, like electric service stations, so to speak, where people can go and just stop with their Porsche and, and recharge. So it is coming, but it's not here yet. So it's, you know, first adopters, it's a, I still think it's a bit early for electric Porsches. I don't know. I still think it's a bit early. I actually saw a Taycan in Bahrain the other day, which I'm completely surprised with because why would you buy an electric car here when petrol is so cheap? Yes. So there's, it's an interesting debate because obviously a Porsche is never going to be a car for the masses and the Boxster is entry level. So if you're going to um, make it all electric and you do it for the car that's available to the most people if that makes sense um it's quite a bold statement yeah but also you're right you know what what does it mean for the uh for the gt4 because that's the car that everyone's raving about it was the evil car of the year last year um and also are we looking at that as the end of the line of that type of car. I don't believe Porsche would do that without announcing it first. Same as the GC3. The GC3 has come out, the 992. I don't believe they would bring out um, the last naturally aspirated 911 GT car and not say this is the last one. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, see, uh, it, it doesn't make sense to me because the GT3 has become, we'll go back to the new GT3, the 992. I'm not a hater. I'm just not convinced completely about the new GT3 at the moment. It is very track focused. It is very race orientated. If you take away the GT4 out of that, out of the box to Cayman, out of the Cayman line, you take away the GT4. I think it's a mistake by Porsche because you know there's there could be people now who look at the GT3 and go, "Hang on, I really like the GT. I used to like the GT3. It's too racy. It's got too big. The GT4 is getting all these great accolades." The GT4, sorry, I might, you know, maybe I should buy a GT4. But if they make that electric and they get rid of it, what's the option? Because, you know, these GT cars are getting, the three GT3s and three RSs are getting quite ridiculous, the, the size of them, you know, the, the race setup of them. Um, I don't know. Which brings me to the point, actually, I just want to pass this by you, um, Ajmal. The GT3 wing, <clears throat> I saw a, a yellow one the other day. I don't know if you saw that on Instagram. I think it was Speed Yellow. Someone got a PTS Speed Yellow um, GT3. The wing to me still, you know, I'm still going to go on about this wing. It doesn't look resolved, right? And then I saw the new, um, the new GT3 RS, you know, the one they track, they're doing around the track and they're doing the prototype testing or the, te the final testing on. The wing is enormous. Like, it's just ridiculous. I'm sorry, but it, it looks too big for the road now. 997 GT3 RS, 991.1.2 GT3 RS, it still looks, you know, I've seen them in Sydney, I've seen them in London. It looks okay. It's borderline being, you know, it's, it's just big enough. You don't want any bigger. And then you see the pictures of the new 992. You've seen the size of the basic GT3 wing. The GT3 RS wing, the pictures, I don't know if you've seen them, Ajmal. They're just, it's insane. Oh, so oh. Then, it bring, then it brings me back to this point. Let me just get your thoughts on this. It brings me back to this point that they're so track, 
they're making the GT3 so track orientated. You know, the GT3 is just like shifted up the line. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the amount of people that are going to want it mm. now could be smaller. I think that's what's happening. I think in my mind. So then are they creating then a gap? They're creating this gap between the Cayman and the GT3. Are they going to drop something in that gap? See, I keep thinking Porsche's, got, Porsche's always got something up their sleeve. Is there something else that they know that they're going to fit in there? That something else is going to come along that's going to be, you know, um, not like track focused as much as the GT3, GT3 RS, better than the GT4, but in between? Um, I, think, I think I'd agree because everything I've read about the GT3 and the GT3 RS, it's, it's so, because it's, it's bigger than the previous one, it's uh, it's got obviously more technology in it, but they've done lots of weight saving. So you know, there's lots of aluminium, there's lots of carbon fiber, and um, so they've kept the weight the same, um, and which means that it's a little bit more extreme. And that and that wing, you're absolutely right because if you have a look at the older ones, they, it, I'm not a design person, but I, I can understand a des- design philosophy and how it it ties into the rest of the car. Whereas this one just does look like that they've just bolted it on. And it feels like a little bit like, um, do you remember the old, old Lamborghini Countach? Yeah. The way you could, where you could bolt on the wing and then just take it off. Um, and it feels like that it's, Oh, why don't I just unbolt it because I'm driving around the roads and it doesn't make any difference. Um, it kind of reminds me of that. And also, I can imagine that when you're looking in the rearview mirror driving on the road, it will be directly across the, the, the rear screen. Yeah, yeah, true, um, true. And and I'm and I can't imagine. I mean, if you owned one, I can't imagine owning one. But if you owned one, I'm just popping down to the shops. You wouldn't. You'd only go out because you'd go I'm going out for a drive to enjoy it, and then it, you'd go. Well, I can't really push it because it's it's yeah. just too fast. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm thinking as well. I mean, it looks very centerish. It looks very McLaren centerish. You know, it's a bit too track focused. I mean, sure, 911s are more drivable than a Senna, but it, it does look very, to me, like that sort of, they're trying to go into that gap. You know what I mean? They're trying to get mm. those customers. They're trying to get a different type of customer. Um, but I don't know. Maybe there's a new model. Maybe there's a new model coming out. Maybe there's something new coming out. Um, I watched the video, and I think you've watched it as well. I watched the video during the week um, on Hoovy's Garage, and I, I never really watch his channel, but I've actually started watching it, and I'm actually I quite enjoy some of his videos. I, I didn't realize they were quite entertaining. Um, I like how he's got a varied, you know, a, a lot of different cars. Uh, he seems to get ones at good prices, but I was really interested in that in that Beck, uh, the replica Spider, the replica Spider 550. Yes. Um, that video. Did you watch that video? I did. I did watch that one. Yes, it's, yeah. it's, uh, he's been mentioning it for quite a long time because he originally bought it. I think you buy it as a almost like a kit, but it comes without the engine. You can buy it as a. You can buy it in different stages. He offers. I mean, this Beck. I mean, Beck is one of those replica names that you just know. You know what I mean? And I didn't realize it has been around for almost. Tw- it's been around for twenty years. Yep. Like it's literally been around for twenty years. Because then I watched a video on Franny and Heidi's garage. And she has one. Um, she's got quite a few Porsches. She has the Beck Spider as well, but hers is from 2001 or 2002. She's got a really early one. What I was surprised about with Hoovy's Garage one, and if you haven't watched it, if the listeners haven't watched it, you should watch this video, um, the Beck Spider. 550 Spider, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, it's the, <clears throat> it's the 1955 Porsche 550 Spider, the one that James Dean you know, died in. Um, it was very fast. It was very light. Um, they only made... I think they say they made about 90 of them in total. Um, Famous people that have owned them, obviously James Dean, uh, Jerry Seinfeld owned one and he sold it uh, in 2016, I think. Yeah, he sold it in 2016 through Gooding and Company auction for 5.35 million. 5.35 million, right? So keep that price in mind. This is a replica Porsche. And I know there's people going, uh, listening going, what are you talking about, Michael? Why are you talking about replicas? I think this car is a pretty good car. And seeing Hoovy drive it, Ajmal, and seeing the quality of the seats, and now they don't just do it with a VW engine. They used to put a VW engine. I think you can still do that option if you want, but they use the Subaru, um, the Subaru, uh, what is it, 2.5-litre boxer engine instead. 
um, which is a lot of power. There's no weight in that car. Of course, this car is fiberglass. The original was, you know, um, aluminium, <clears throat> but this one is fiberglass. But, you know, he's been doing it for 20 years. Um, it's got a tubular frame. By all accounts, it's very similar to the construction of the original 550 Spider, except it is fiberglass. And I think it's pretty damn cool, honestly. And I looked in to, to see if in New South Wales in Australia, where I live in Sydney, if you could actually register it. But apparently, I don't think you can. Apparently in Victoria, there's someone who's got one for sale in Victoria, in Melbourne, who said, and I read it on Porsche forums in Australia, who said that in Melbourne they have a different rule. But in New South Wales, I think you can't register it. Can you register them in the UK? Yes, you can. Um, now, in if, so I did a quite a lot of research a long time ago um, into uh, a Paul, um, 356 Speedster, only because I loved the way they looked. And, you know, they're a ridiculous amount of money, hundreds of thousands of pounds. Yeah. And um, so I thought, well, for £30,000, I could buy one of these. Um, and they're based on, so they still have an historic number plate uh, registration because they have the, they're made from a shortened um, pan of a beetle. And there's a company called Chesel down uh, on the South Coast. Who okay. Make them. Okay. So that's uh, a but, different company. Yeah, and they and they come registered, but with um, with the Beck one, you could get it registered over here. Um, but the problem you'd have is it might get registered as a kit car unless it was based on something else. So if you had the underpinnings of something else, well, apparently it's. I don't know. I was reading things on forums saying people are saying it can be classed as a 1955 car because it's a replica of a 1955 car. You know what I mean? So that's how you can bring, but it's not really because it's a new car. But apparently, the yes. way it's constructed, the Beck one, that the, the the benefit of the Beck one over these other brands that do it, because I know there's a brand in a, a company in Australia that makes them as well. Apparently, is the tubular frame. It is the construction of it, where they haven't just cut down a beetle and and made a made a speedster or made a spider. You know, Beck sells a spider, they sell the speedster, and they sell the GT. They sell another one too, which is a more limited one, which is more expensive. Um, the GT. Which one is it? GT something, right? I can't remember what it is now. I think Beck is... Uh, yeah, I don't know. What do you think? No, well, well, over here, I, you wouldn't be... If it was made brand new from the ground up, it doesn't matter what specs it was made to. Um, if it's not based on an historic car that was made originally made 60s or 50s, you can't then register it as one of those cars. It would be registered as a new car or as a kit car. And there's a in, in the UK, um, I think there's a stigma attached to having a registered kit car because they used to have a, a Q. So the, a, a Q, the letter Q doesn't appear in the registration number of cars over here. Okay. And and it only used to, I don't know what the rules are now, but it only used to appear in kit cars. So you knew it was a kit car because it had a Q at the beginning. Right. Uh, and there's a slight stigma attached to that, almost devaluing it. And also it was more difficult to get insurance. Yeah, there's a there's a Instagram page in Japan, um, and I think they're in Tokyo. And literally, they just sell the Beck Speedsters and Spiders. They've got all the cars there. I thought it was original. I I, I don't know. I, I've seen these pictures from this guy before, and I didn't look into it. And then I was searching Beck Speedsters on on Beck Spiders on um, Instagram, and it came up. And they've got all of them. So then I was thinking maybe for Australia, you know, Australia can bring in Japanese cars. So if it's in Japan, even though it's made in US. And it's gone, well, it hasn't been made in the US. I'm guessing this company, they just get the rolling chassis and they put the Subaru engines in them because they're in Japan, right? Because you, the cheapest way to yep. buy it is about 30,000 US without an engine. I think they do it complete for 50,000 or something. I think they can, you can get a complete one from Beck if you want with the engine. Um, but if it's in Japan and they've built it in Japan, they've assembled it, assembled it in Japan with the motor, I'm thinking why can't you then get it from Japan to Australia? Because you can import cars, you can bring in cars from Japan. See, I wonder how that works. I'm just trying to work out, because no one has, seems to have them in Australia, so I don't think they're possible. But I, I like the idea, the idea of them. I like how when he was driving it, how, you know, the experience of it. I guess it's just one of those fun things. I mean, if it's only, you know, like if it's only 30,000 only, but if it's only 30,000 US, it's not that bad. You know what I mean? Um to get that experience well, that you would never be able to buy a proper, you know, spider or a speedster. I mean, it did, it did sound fantastic and he looked to be really enjoying driving it. And, um, and it kind of reminds me of driving my MG 
apart from it's not as fast. It's so raw what you're doing and the enjoyment is just far outweighs anything else. The only thing is, again, it's that, um, and people listening might say the same thing, is there is a, I think there's a stigma attached to it. Less so these days. Um, But if you were to say, well, actually, would I ever be able to experience that with a real spider? Highly unlikely. Yeah, well, there used to be all those awful, there used to be that kit car, I think it was in the 80s or whatever, it's called Purvis Eureka, which was like a fiberglass body, which oh, was, yes. you know, that was the that was available. And I know that in Australia, there were old ones of those. I remember, I remember in the 90s, there was, there was people with Purvis Eurekas in Australia. So that got through. That was, that was a pretty odd car. I don't know what that was based on. Um, I meant to tell you, Ajmal, I was looking at European collectibles uh, in LA. They have three 912s at the moment. Um, they have two white ones, a 69 and a 68, and they have that sand beige 912 that I think I sent you ages ago. They still have it for 66,000. Um, I, I have them on my screen right now. Yeah, I'm pretty keen on the white. I'm pretty keen on the white one for 59,000. Even though I don't like the seats, I like the the black perforated seats better than those pepita seats they put in them. And I don't think they're the original seats. It's 68. Yeah, that's 68 for 59,950. This is on European collectibles. If the listeners want to go to the site and have a look. Um, it's got black on the side of the seats, which is usually chrome, and it's got like a lift thing. It doesn't look like the correct seats. And then the car of the dream on this side is that 1972 911T that he has, which he's got a video up on YouTube um, of him driving it, which sounds amazing. There's a silver 1972 911T. And it looks like the seats in the 911T are the same as the seats that have been put into the um, 68 um, 912. I don't know if they're the original seats, that's all. I was just wondering if you, when you look at them, do they look original? Um, I'm not sure because th- th- there were so many variations was of everything, you know, when you look at it. But okay. it's the, are you talking about the ones that are, they, they're, really, they're kind of beige with the checkered middle? Yeah, the nine, 1968, 1968 912, 59,950. And if you look at the side of the seat, they've got checkered seats, but it's the, it's the mechanism the pullback mechanism. It's actually black. It's not chrome. I always thought the 912s, oh. that was chrome. And this one has like a yes. little lever, has a little lever at the top. Um, so that, that mechanism on the seat is not like the one that's, if you look at the 69 or the other one, the other um, 68, um, it doesn't have that same seat uh, hardware. So I thought, yep. and then I looked at the 72 911 and it looks like it's got the same hardware as that. So I thought it might, might not be original, but it's quite a good car. I quite like the price of it. 59,000 is not a bad price. But no, I, it, does, I, it does look good. And you're right. For that, much, for that much money, those are the kind of questions that you would want answered, wouldn't you? You'd want to know yeah, yeah. how original is it. But, you know, he's got three to choose from. There's, there's, it's a bias market there. He has actually got three to choose from. I've been looking at them every day thinking thinking and thinking i just wanted to ask you actually that 1958 did you see the 90 this is what i was getting to more so than the 912s did you see the 1958 mga roadster that he has on that side um i haven't seen that one no uh, um i've not really been interested in mgas because i think it was originally because we're in a cold rainy climate and they're not waterproof you don't really get i don't even think you've got glass you have to lift the glass into the door oh really what model is yours mine's an mg 1968 mgb roadster are you would you ever you would you ever part with that car or you just you're going to keep it forever um i do you know what i probably would now because it's in storage it has been since about october last year um but i always say that when i'm not driving it when i'm driving it I always think, oh, it's it's amazing. I love driving it. It's such good fun. Um, and especially if you're driving on a balmy evening in the middle of summer, it's fantastic. But then you think, well, how many of those evenings do I actually take it out on? True, true. Are they sought after or not? Are they, are they appreciated no, much? No. no, not at all. No, they're not appreciating it at all because it's one of the most common classic cars in the world. And you okay. can still buy every single piece part on that car is still manufactured. Right, right. Um, and they're so readily available, no one really cares. Right. So last week, I don't know whether we spoke about it, that website that you sent me, did we talk about this last week? I can't remember. The One Design, that company that was near you? Oh, Did we talk uh, about that? Theon. Yeah, we Theon, know. Theon. Yeah, Theon is um, it's a local company, and it's started by a guy called Adam Hawley, I think. He used to work in motorsport and things like that. 
And um, it's primarily um, a restoration company. So they do really high-end restorations of, of classic 911s. But they also do what they call recreations, which is kind of Singer-esque, but not to the extreme engineering level of Singer. Because a Singer is, is a Porsche uh, on the outside, but it's so <laughs> heavily re-engineered to such an, ex- an extent. Yeah. Uh, whereas this Theon is... Um, it's it's almost reimagined, so it's still uh, a, a classic. No, well, it's not a classic 911. It's the same as Singer. It's a 964, but it's backdated, um, and it's got re- um, different engine options, and it's made for performance, reliability, drivability, all of those things. Uh, but it's not a classic in the sense that you're just buying an original car. It's a, it's more right, along right. The, the spectrum of Singer. I was listening to Smoking Tire today when I was in the gym um, and Jensen Button was on it. Jensen Button and someone else, they're doing Radford or something, Radford Body Body Works or something. They've got some company, some old company they've taken over. And they were talking about cars and he said, you know, like he doesn't like to have cars now that he can't drive. So he doesn't really have a lot of supercars. He just has a lot of classic cars. Well, he does have some classic supercars, I guess, old Jaguars. He's a big Jaguar fan. Um, But he was saying that, you know, the thing about these classic cars is you get in them and yeah they look great and as soon as you get in them <clears throat> they don't they don't the experience doesn't match up i think that's what he was saying the experience doesn't match up there's always something wrong with them <clears throat> they, <clears throat> excuse mm. me they always don't feel as good as what they should and he said that's what he loves about singer how it's got that look how it's perfect and then you sit in it and it feels perfect and it dries perfect and of course yeah of course it does because it's you know 750,000 US, you know, so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so of course it does. But, you know, Singer is so popular. You know, uh, the other, yesterday or the day before, I reposted an image on my Porsche Gould Instagram of a singer on a beach in Dubai. There's this guy who's got an a Instagram page. He's got a singer and he's based in Dubai and he seems to drive his car. Having a car in the Middle East, I would be very concerned about anything nice because all the white cars here, the white, if they're more than like eight years old, they start to look cream. All the lights start to go, you know, discolored, well, the perspex, because the heat. Heat. of the heat and the sand, you know, when you're driving in the sand. I don't know. You'd have to have so much money to have a singer. But it's, but it's the power of the singer. I posted that image, reposted that image from the guy who owns it, and it's like it's had like 9,000 likes or something. Oh, wow. Like it's insane. And I'm thinking, is that because it's just a rear view of a Porsche or is it because of the singer? Was it because it's on the beach? But singers, and even my wife, Natasha, she saw it and she said, oh, that's the Porsche I like, the one you just posted. What is that? And it's like, oh, yeah, it's, you mean you like it better than a 912? That's, that's pretty much what she was saying. And it's like, of course you like it more than a 912. Um, but, you know, the unattainable, no, I, I, the unattainable. I, I, I like the... Um the engineering side of it and i like that i think williams was it williams f formula one yes it was yeah yeah the engine Um, the engine yeah and and the way that they if if you see the engine and the air intakes and how they cool the engine and how it comes there's vents right by the glass It, it, it it's a thing of beauty i think if you just saw that side of it and, and the car looks amazing and it's uh, upholstered in such a, a brilliant way and the attention to detail is fantastic. But I, f- I feel like when, when you speak to um, the people who engineered it, uh, sorry, designed it, and the pe- not the people who engineered it and the people who buy it, it kind of, like I said last, last time, it puts, puts me off ever so slightly um, just yeah. because it's, it's almost cult-like. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, if you have that car, you own a lot of other very expensive cars. You, you wouldn't just have yes. that one car. You know what I mean? It's like Bugatti yes. owners or Pagani owners. They just don't have one car. They probably have like 30 cars. You know what I mean? Yep. That's just on, how it on works. On that note, I've got a quiz for you. You got a quiz? I've got a quiz. So on the Drive <laughs> Tribe website, right. they do a little quiz and it's right. called which, which Porsche are you? Which Porsche are you on? Oh, no. Here we go. So it's a series of questions that are aren't, aren't they? They're not. Uh, these questions aren't particularly based on any AI or machine learning or anything like that. They're quite basic, and then they reveal your one Porsche that will rule all of them, and it's the one that you need. But this is on Drive up, Tribe. This is not. This Garrett. won't be true. This won't be real. Of course it won't. Of course. Um, but it's. Uh, so if you had the choice of owning only one Porsche. 
<clears throat> yeah. And it would and it would be your everything car. So let me run through the questions. Okay. Quick fire. So I just want to tell the listeners before we get into this, I want to tell the listeners that before when Ajmal and I just connected before we, we first got onto Zoom before we started recording, I said I want to call this episode One True Porsche. Um, so this kind of really <laughs> ties in ties into exactly what you're going to this this survey, right? This questionnaire, a little bit. Yeah, because as soon as you said it, and I already had it on my screen, I thought, ah, oh, perfect. Um, so first question: How okay. important is styling? Is it highly important, moderately important, or almost insignificant? Highly important. Okay. Uh, next one: Which kind of car do you prefer? Supercar. Balance sports car or luxury car? Balance sports car. Will you be taking your car to the track? Probably not. How large is your budget? Extreme, significant or moderate? Depends on the Bitcoin price at the moment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, is it, what are the choices? Uh, extreme, significant, moderate. Uh, I don't know what significant is. Let's say significant. If it's one, okay. we're talking one car here, so I'll, I'll say yeah, it's, it's significant. One car, yeah. I'll say it's yeah. significant. Will you be driving on gravel country roads? Probably, yes. How important is technology? Is it crucial, mildly important, or insignificant? Mildly important. Depends what the technology is. I guess if it's driving aids, some driving aids, but not that important. Mildly. Okay. So next one, choose an engine type, naturally aspirated, turbocharged, or V8 hybrid. Naturally aspirated. It's the only answer, really. Uh, select a driving destination, downtown, racetrack, or country roads. Country road. <laughs> the answer is up. What is <laughs> it? I'll tell you what it is. Yeah, tell me what it is. I'll tell you what it is. Yes. It's a 911 GT3 RS. There you go. A GT3 <laughs> RS. So, yep. for, the, for the people who haven't heard me talk about this before, I am keen on the GT3 RS. I haven't... It is a car that I, I do like the 997 um, GT3 RS, and I don't even mind the 0.1 um, the 0.1 PDK paddle shifter um, GT3 RS, but the price is too high. The price is too high. Mm. Yep. Did you do the, the? Did you do this quiz? What was your answer that you ended up with? Uh, I, I I ended up with a Cayman. A oh, Cayman. GT4. Yeah. Oh, GT4. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Um, but, but the little blurb that comes up explaining why it, your mindset, it says you want a lightweight coupe that is naturally aspirated and fast on the track. You do not care about practicality. Okay. That's what it says? Yep. See, that's an interesting one. So one, one true Porsche, right? One, can one Porsche do it all? Can one Porsche do it all? So they're saying for me, based on those results, <laughs> scientific results, <laughs> GT3 RS. I don't know if I could live with a GT3 RS as the only Porsche that I have. I don't think I could. I definitely couldn't. No, I couldn't. I don't think I could. I don't think I could. Um, even the GT3, and, and Steve's spoken about this before, years ago when Steve was um, <clears throat> using his car a lot for work, he was driving the GT3 where he put most of the miles on it. Even that, I think, was a struggle after a while. You know, it becomes very difficult to drive, especially in traffic and driving it every day and parking it and going to see clients and all that. It, you know, it's not easy, especially if you have to sort of, you know, park in the inner city. Um, in Sydney, I live in the inner city. So a GT3 RS, even when I park my 997, I'm, I, very, I don't go into car parks. I never go into an underground car park, very rarely. Uh, I park wow. on the street, which people would say, well, isn't it safer in an underground car park? And to me, it's safer on the street. Um, and I select where I go to. I don't go to, you know, I don't park it everywhere. Um, I'm very conscious of that because I know in Sydney, there are a lot of idiots around and people will vandalize your car. People will jump on your car. People will do things to your car. It just, it just happens. You know what I mean? It just happens. I, th I think for a big city, there's always that chance of it happening. And I but I think for me, if we are saying the one car that can do it all, uh, firstly, in term, for me, forget the Cayenne, forget the McCann, because you know, you know my feelings on those, uh, because I'm never going to get in that car and go, I'm just going to go for a drive because I enjoy driving it as a, as a driving car. The um, Cayman's not a bad one, though. The Cayman GT4, you know, it's not too hardcore. It sounds great. It looks good. It's, yes, big, that, it's big enough. It's like an old 911. Yes, on that I would, but it's the, I, I would dismiss the SUVs. 
the Cayenne Absolutely. and the Absolutely. and the Macan. Um, and the only thing with the Cayman, the only issue I have with it is if it's my one car for all of them, it doesn't have any back seats. It's a two seater. And at the moment, I can fit my children into the back of my 996. Yeah, so that's a better car for you. It's better if you yes. do have the seats. So you want something with the seats. So GT3s don't come with three seats. GT3 Tourings don't come with three seats. GTS, 911 GTS, is that something you would consider? A newer GTS, a 991? Naturally aspirated? I would consider that. Yes, for all of those reasons. I'd want it to be manual, I'd want it to be naturally aspirated, and the GTS is always the one that people never used to talk about for a while, and suddenly everybody's now talking about the GTS, and I feel it's one of those that's just going to skyrocket in price. Yeah, I agree. I like the GTS. Um, I like the GTS. I do like the naturally aspirated, but in all honesty, I would not, if one came up, and I look at them, I do look at them in Sydney, because in one side of my head always thinks... And we're talking about one true Porsche, you know, one Porsche to do it all. And if I was thinking, you know, is the 997, I'm going to sort of go off track a bit here, but is the 997 that I own the one car that I would keep as the Porsche that can do it all? Probably not. Probably not. Mm. And I know a lot of people are going to say, what? And, I, and it, I'm not sure. I, I think probably not because it would be good to have just a little bit more power. It would be good to have a little bit more power. Um, you know, like a really good, just say, for example, a really good 997.2 Carrera S came up, which they don't come up very often. I think the Carrera 2S is going to be one of those cars in years to come. You're going to say, I should have bought one, even though they wanted so much more higher premium than the 997.1 Carrera S. People are going to say, I should have bought one when they were 150000 Australian, or I should have bought one when they were whatever they are in the UK. Because I think that car is going to be very collectible. It was brought out, you know, during, after the financial crisis. There weren't a lot of point twos in Australia, especially. There weren't a lot of manuals, you know what I mean? So I think that one is a really good one to buy for future, you know, future cars. So I think the point two, 997.2 Carrera 2S could almost be the car that could do it all. I think the other one is the 991 Carrera GTS. Um, point, yeah, one or, point, one or, point one or point two, point two actually, Ajmal. I don't have a problem with the turbocharge. I actually don't have a problem. I would prefer the point one. I would prefer the point one. Yeah, I would prefer it. And I don't really have a problem with the turbo either. And the for the reasons that some other people might complain about, because when you're driving around town and you're not revving it very high, it's actually quite quiet. Yeah. Um, whereas the naturally aspirated <laughs> is, is pretty loud all the time. Um, and, and also, um, just from uh, like... Steve's um, experience of driving his GT3. If you if you've got a high performance, uh, highly strung, high performance car, and you're sat in traffic, um, and you and you'll always have that slight anxiety of is it going to overheat? Am I just going to boil the engine? Um, and oh, and it's not made to be used like this. And there might be journeys that you make where it never really warms up. It, you never really rev it. And yeah, that could yeah. happen for days and days and days if you were just going to work and back. Uh, whereas um the, the the gts for example it's um it's not such an extreme car and you could quite comfortably drive it day to day i agree the other one which i've left out which is another one which i always keep an eye on the prices of them and i noticed magnus walker just bought one he bought a very high mileage one um is the 991.1 turbo s now i really like the turbo s i really like the 991 turbo s Guy in this building has one. He has the white one, but it's not an S. It's just a turbo. Um, I like the flanks of it. I like the styling of it. Like I said, I don't have a problem with turbo. I think the turbo S is good because it's the top of the you know it's top of the line. It's actually got mm. really nice features. They're still quite high in price. I think that's that's another good car. Um, but I want to go back to you. You have your you have your nine twelve. And you have your 996. Now, you did this drive tribe thing, and it says you should be a Cayman GT4 as your one car. Is the 912 or the 996, if you had to keep one, is one of them the Porsche that can do it all? Is it one true Porsche that you can do it all? Uh, it, it would be the 996. It would have to be. If it was the one, I only had the choice of one. It would have to be that one um, unless... Because the thing with the uh, 912 is it's obviously left-hand drive. Um, and, you know, if I was going somewhere with my daughter, she'd be on the wrong side of the car. If I, if she sat next to me, I'd, I'd have, you know, strange 
parental anxiety about that. Um, and also um, because of the climate that I live in, it would rust. Um, I, I think reliability wise, it's fine. I think it'll be fine if it's used regularly. I think the more regularly they get used, the better they are. Um, and um, build quality, all of those things I'm not worried about. It's just the climate. If we were in a warmer climate, I, yeah. I would, I would probably, and the salt, the roads weren't salted, I would probably be okay with a, a 912 yeah. as my everyday car. <laughs> Two days ago, I woke up, I woke up um, and I went to. I sat down here and went straight on the computer and I looked at European collectibles and I said to my wife, I said, I'm going to buy that 912. I'm buying it. And, you know, of course, my wife being sensible, saying you have to wait because of these reasons, the reasons that I've told you, you know, things that are happening in London that I have to wait. And I said, I'll just sell the 997. I'll sell my 997 and I'll just have the 912. And it's like, that won't work. And, and I think she's right. It wouldn't work. You know what I mean? Even though we're in a hot climate, even though it is a classic, it wouldn't work. Uh, you know, as much as I want the 912, I couldn't just live with the 912, unfortunately. Um, but I love the car and I could have it obviously alongside the 997 is fine. I mean, I always, we always talk about this and we've talked about this before, you know, like on, on owner's stories, I always um, mention it to guys, you know, like what, is the, what are the other Porsches you're searching for? What are the other cars you're looking for? And it seems most of us always have two to three Porsches that we'd like to have in our collection. It's always like a three-car collection, which is why I thought today, Ajmal, you know, it's really interesting to know if, if, you know, can you buy one Porsche to do it all? Is it possible or is it just not possible? You know what I mean? I mean, the essence of the 911 is through the whole range. The, es you know, the essence of Porsche is there no matter what you drive, whether it be a Boxster or a Cayman or, a, you know, even early Boxster, new Boxster, 911. You know, not talking SUVs here. We're just talking, you know, the sports car range of, of of Porsche, um, are we being greedy? You know, are we being greedy that we want more than one when really one should satisfy? You know, why doesn't the nine? I, I say the nine nine seven won't satisfy because I want more power, but really, I guess it, it probably would. You know what I mean? It's not like it's slow. It's definitely not a slow car. I think uh, you're right because we always want more, and we always if, if you're. If we were to say, let's fixate on getting that one car that does it all, something will be a compromise. And on some things, you, you might think, well, actually, I'm not going to compromise on that one thing. You know, I want X amount of performance. And then the other things fall in line behind that. So you might go, well, actually, if I want that performance, I've got to get a GT3. But then the GT3 isn't my everyday car because it doesn't have rear seats and yeah. it's uncomfortable and blah, blah. So you go, you look at cars that you know, that have four seats. And then you go, well, instantly my options are limited to a certain number of cars. And then you work out from those, which other things can I compromise to get the one that's the right price, does all of the things that I want. And where I live, it's going to fit in around me. So for me, the 996 is that thing where I just never think about, oh, should I take that there? Or should I leave it there? Or is it going to get me there? Or can I fit everything in? Or can I fit my family into it? Uh, admittedly, my wife hates the 996. Uh, <laughs> really? Why? For what she, reason? Well, because it's always dirty. Because you haven't detailed it. There's. She doesn't. She doesn't actually <laughs> care. She doesn't care about that. But she thinks. Okay. She doesn't. She says, "I don't understand why you have it." Oh. So, okay. Um, because when I bought the 912. And it, and it arrived. She came out and she looked at it and she said, I get that. She said, I get why you have that. Look at it. Yeah, because it's a classic. <laughs> it's, it's something special. Yeah, it's something special. Yeah. More, well, not that a 906 isn't special, but it's completely different. But as an everyday, you use it as your daily driver. You couldn't use the 912. You use the 996. So it makes sense for you. Yeah. But I think from her point of view, she thinks, well, why did you buy that particular one? Because when she gets in, obviously it's had water leaking in and it smells a little bit because it you know, smells of damp unless in the yeah. summer I air it out. Um, and it's a bit crusty on the outside, you know, it, it, and I don't wash it. So she just thinks, I, I just don't understand why you well, have it. You know, why the don't other, you buy something better? Exactly. The other day you told me you're very close to the, the Porsche Centre, all those Porsche centres near you. It's very close, right? The, yep. the big, you could just go there, take your wife, and start looking at that 992. <laughs> Well, in the UK headquarters is about five miles away. Um, but, you know, <laughs> Aston Martin is 10 minutes away. Really? <laughs> uh, a 10 minute walk. Um, but the, 
I, I do think that, you know, it's, it's all a compromise. But from her point of view, she's because she hasn't driven it and she's ensured to drive it, but she's just never felt the need to drive but it. But maybe and when she drives she's, it, she's she'll, not, maybe, sorry, maybe when she drives it, though, she will like it. You know what I mean? Once you drive it and you feel the difference, you feel what it's all about. Even though it is a bit crusty and it's dirty or whatever, she'll feel what it's all about. Well, I think your opinion of what you're about to draw is is set um, or is always relative to what you've what you last drove, and it's um, so she'll have driven 2017 Golf R, and which is super comfortable, super reliable, super practical, and stupidly fast. And yeah, she, yeah. she will do everything will be relative to that. So she'll say, okay, so it's not very comfortable. It's not very practical. The gear change is a bit notchy. Right, uh, it's right. not as fast as my other car. Hang on. I can't just floor it around a bend because it's not four wheel drive. Yeah. Well, you, your cool. wife's coming from something that's pretty special that, you know, that a lot of people class as being the top of the, well, a very important car, very special car, very sought yes, after car. So, but the, the things, the reasons that I have it are not important to her. And I can understand that. See, I think, um, <clears throat> I want to, uh, I think it was a week ago or so, uh, and Elliot and I, Elliot sent a message to me via Instagram about his car. <clears throat> Elliot has been on Owner Stories, who has the new 992 in Seattle. And maybe that's a good, uh, I, I am going to get Elliot back and we're going to chat about his car because I want to see after six months or after eight months, you know, what his thoughts are of the 992 and if he's had any problems with it, et cetera. Because I think the 992 is an interesting one to viewers, uh, to listeners, sorry, because a lot of people don't have one as yet. You know what I mean? But maybe the 992, what Porsche has done with the 992, especially the Carrera S, maybe that is the one car to do it all. Maybe that is the one Porsche to do it all. It's a little bit bigger. You know, there's got the seats if you need the seats, if you've got small children. It's got good power. It's got good technology. You know, is that the one? Maybe it is the one. I think time will tell, obviously, but um, on paper, it does look like it should be the one, I think, because um, I mean, there's reasons, there's obvious reasons why the others aren't because of the, the number of seats, the e- extreme racing nature of a lot of them. So when you say, well, I want the power and I want the practicality and I want the reliability and I want the comfort, it, it, it ticks all of those boxes. Yeah, true. True, and, true. And it's a Porsche. So, and it's so a Porsche. all of those boxes are ticked. Yeah, and it's all of those boxes are ticked. And it, it's a fantastic looking car as well. So I, th- I think you're right. It you, you kind of naturally land on that spot. Yeah, it's a tricky one. I mean, we always think about more than one. It's very, I mean, to narrow it down to one, you know, one Porsche to do it all, one true Porsche, so to speak. Uh, it's not easy. It's not easy because you're going to have to make a compromise somewhere, aren't you? There's always a compromise. Yep. Um, and you have exactly. to make sure if, that, if that's not going to niggle on you and you're going to be okay every day when you go outside and look at your car and go, oh, I really hate that it doesn't do this. Um, I guess when for me, you know, my 997 um, and being apart from it makes it probably more so. But when I go and look at it, I don't find there's anything wrong with it. You know what I mean? There's nothing really wrong with it. And even the power side of it, I know I just said I should, you know, I'd rather have a 0.2 Carrera S. There's nothing wrong with the power of my car. It's actually very, you know, spirited. There's nothing wrong with it at all. And especially with the shorter shifter now, it's actually much better. Um, so I think, you know, I'm probably, I could probably almost do it with the 997. I could probably almost do it. Um, did I mention about the prices in Australia? Have I mentioned that yet? I've forgotten what yes. I, yep. I did. Yeah. Yep. The, the prices have gone up. But I think you're right on the 997 with, in terms of power because you can properly use all of the power. Yes. And enjoy it. And, you know, it's, it's such fun when then the really high rare. Yes. And if you had, you know, 992 Carrera S, yeah. it's very rare that you'd be able to do that. I mean, even following Steve in his GT3 on the, on the twist, he's going through the National Park outside of Sydney. You know what I mean? Like, and I've said this before in the podcast, and Steve says it's just because of his tyres, because he's got Cup 2 tyres and they're stickier tyres. You know what I mean? But, you know, the 997 base doesn't, uh, uh, there's no problem keeping up with the GT3. And I guess that's the way you're driving or whatever, but it's not like you're left in the dust. You know, you can still keep mm. up. You can still keep the pace. Grip-wise, I, I, I know Steve's car does is more on rails. It's more stuck. You know, it's very sticky. Um, but that just comes down to tyres, I guess. <clears throat> so. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, if you... Because there's a thing about performance, there's a thing about 
uh, handling, but there's also enjoyable, the enjoyable experience. They're not always exactly the same thing. You know, ticking the performance thing, ticking the handling thing doesn't always tick the enjoyable thing. Yeah. Yeah, true, true. Um, so, you know, where people might have lower lower performance cars that are so much more engaging, you can exploit so much more of the power and um, the, the grin factor is just really high. But are they everyday cars? I don't know that. I think guess the jury's out on some of those. Yeah, yeah. I haven't asked you this before. I haven't asked you this actually before, I don't think. Would you mod the 996? Would you put, you know, Fuchs wheels on it or change the wheels or put a ducktail on it or do things to it no. would you actually change it or you just like to keep it as it is i'd just keep it exactly as it is i wouldn't change anything unless it led to some practical benefit um so, i'd keep yeah, it on, as, as as designed and as thrown out of the factory and you know people have been sending me messages all the time like when are you getting your exhaust and your roof rack and your steel wheels what's happening it's a very common question I get asked. When, when's Ajmal going to uh, change his steel, <laughs> steel wheels, get his dance wheels. exhaust and get his roof rack? <laughs> What's happening? And, and cocoa mats for inside. You've got to get the cocoa mats. I've got to get the mats. That's true. But it's Cocoa mats are 300 garage. US. They're so cheap. I know, but I, I think I feel like there's some things that I need to get over first because I don't want to accumulate a lot of parts that aren't fitted to the car. I find that quite depressing. So it's going to the garage tomorrow have some welding done for anchor points for seat belts oh fantastic who's doing that so for you th- uh it's a local guy that i found oh, okay. he is a vw guy um so he's got um i think his car is a, a beetle from the early 70s that's got a subaru engine in it <laughs> really? um <laughs> and he's a fabricator okay perfect. so uh perfect. so he, he and he and he's up the road so um, he's going to put some anchor points in for three-point seat belts because uh, I've got two point uh, the lap seat belts and I've got the three-point ones because I, I thought I'll just get those. But then I spoke to him and he said he could do it in an afternoon. Uh, and then the next step is going to be I need to get the stance right because yep. that's the, number one, the very next thing that needs to be done. I'll probably give it a go this weekend and if I, if I can't get around to it or it doesn't get done, then I'll just phone Jack. Like okay. to Jack and say, Jack, can you sort this out? And I've got a photo of one and I can say, look, make it look a cross between what Nick's is and this. Yeah. Uh, and then. The so will you have to, of, will you have to upgrade the suspension? No. No. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's on spring plates and a torsion bar that joins the two together. So it's literally, you take it off and put it up one notch and put it back on. Oh, okay. Uh, that's at the, that's at the back. At the front, it's literally a bolt that you unwind and just push the car down. Oh, really? Lands. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's, so it's that simple. easy. Wow. It, really simple. It's just a case of getting it right. And yeah, the spring yeah. plates are a little bit more difficult because if you whack it off and you haven't measured exactly where it is, then you've got no idea where to put it back. Did um, you did you change the tires on your car when you bought it or it's got old tires? Did you upgrade the tires? Uh, got, I can't remember. N- n- no, it's got the tires that it came with, but they are fairly new and they're period correct tires so someone okay. spent quite a lot of money getting them okay that's um, good. um but <clears throat> i was thinking of just filling the arch out slightly and putting spaces on but i don't want to do that until i've got the right wheels on and then yeah. <clears throat> i'm internally debating do i keep if i get steel wheels do i keep them uh silver or do i go slightly outlaw and get black ones make them get them Mm, coated black i think silver personally oh i can't i can't decide because i've seen a few and, I, and um, silver no hubcaps silver no hubcaps that, that was my ideal to begin with and obviously i want the circle on the door yeah. as well the decal and then yeah, i thought yeah. should i put fog lights on and i bought some brackets that yeah. quite expensive I don't think you should. Uh, but then i thought well i started looking at the ones just thought, one fog light right line. it's just a single one uh, at the front right that looks really cool when the single one what I was going to go for both, okay. but then I started to think that I like the clean lines and I messaged um, Lara, that Porsche girl. Oh, yes. And I just asked her opinion. Um, and I said, look, I'm, I'm buying the, I'm, I'm just, you know, someone who knows. That's very, this. that's very forward of you. <laughs> no, well, we're messaging about something else already. And while she's we a nice girl. Like, she's else, very nice. Yeah. I've spoken to her before really, as well. She's, yeah. and, and she's, um, and I think, I value her opinion on that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. No, she's a nice, she's um, a really nice person. Yeah, and she's and she's and you know she wasn't backward in giving me her opinion. 
Um, and, I, and I said, look, I started buying the bits to put some fog lights on. And now I'm starting to think, what should I do? And I said, I've just been looking at your car because you just posted some video up. I just thought, actually, I've taken the the bump stops off the front to give it that clean look. Am I undoing that work by putting mm, fog yeah, lights on? Yeah. And she kind of just reinforced what I was already thinking. And she just went, it, look, it just looks better clean. Yeah. You know, I agree. With all, without all the other stuff on it. And then I thought, okay, that's exactly what I was thinking. And you've just reinforced that. So she kind of just pushed me over the edge on the direction I was going to go in anyway. Cool. So a lot of things planned, getting it ready for the summer, getting ready for those drives. Get yes, it out so it needs a tune-up as well. Tune-up, uh, stance, and then I'll start thinking about getting the wheels, getting the exhaust, getting it sounding right. Oh, and and also you saw out. that um, you saw that uh, PJ organises that event, Classics at the Clubhouse. Yes. Do you know where that, that would be somewhere near you, I guess? That must be somewhere uh, in their region. Yeah, it's not far. And there's a couple of people have messaged me. So Mark, who's already been on, yep. um, on his stories... So he's already sent me uh, information about uh, Box and Gas, which is on up in Vista, which is not far from me. Yeah, that's going to be great. That's in August, though, isn't it? I'm not going to be. I yes. won't be in. I won't be in London in August, which is unfortunate. I'm really quite annoyed about that. I saw that come up the other day, and I thought, damn, I'm not going to be in London. Well, we'll have to organise something when you're here, and we'll get all the local guys, PJ, Jack. Um, we'll have to do. I don't know. Brunch yeah. or something. <laughs> but I think classic of the clubhouse. I think um, PJ said they have a thing where you just where they just have a. I don't know if it's running at the moment because obviously because of lockdown. But where you just go and park your car, that's like a Monday night thing or something. I think it's on it's on his Instagram anyway. I can't remember what he said. There's another. Yes, thing I've I've seen and and Jack's uh, reposted some stuff as well. Yeah, it'd be um, good to see the other cars at that. What, what turn up? Yes, and I think it's fairly casual, so I quite like that. Um, I'll probably reach out to him directly and just see. Um, what the yeah, PJ's a nice guy and how it works. Yeah, nice he's, he no, he's, uh, I had a really good exchange with him on Instagram yesterday. Uh, and there's also um, not far from me a place called Caffeine and Machine. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. I've seen it on YouTube yep. videos actually. Yeah, that's that's not that far away. Okay. Uh, probably about 40, 40 miles away. And I think uh, they have an air cooled appreciation Wednesday once a month. Oh, that'd be great. Just, that'd be great. Um, and they do, um, and, and at the weekend, I think you can just buy a ticket and just you get a spot in the car park. Well, I'm just going to sit here and look at European collectibles and look at those two white 912s and think, how can I get them now? I, I think, because I was going to say, you know, when we were talking about the one car to rule them all and you're looking at your 997. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, two would cars. It, would it all? But, then, but then you look at it and go, oh, but it's not a 912. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Need both, oh, you know. Here we are saying one car to do it all. And it's hard. <laughs> it's very hard to get one. It's very hard to get it, one. It, it <clears> is, <throat> and, and we and we put these sort of false uh, limitations on ourselves. Yeah. And it's, but it's a great debate, isn't it? It's a and great it's debate to have. It's budget as well. You know, we all have things to pay for. It's it's budget. What can you afford? Yeah, budget, space, uh, all of those things, um, and then uh, maintaining them as well. Well, we could have said, and I didn't say it. You could have said the GT3 Touring would be close to being the car to do it all but it doesn't have back seats so that's why i didn't nope. you know for you it doesn't have back seats so if you want something with back seats you know it doesn't have it so the gt3 look isn't for me because it's a little extreme don't tell steve i said that yeah but the touring's um, okay because there's no wing yeah true true i think it's just the way the wheels sit it's just the drive trip it's just the the width of the car the no. way it sits when you're looking at it low down you need to look at them more. You need to look at them more. They're, the 997 GT3 is a beautiful car. When you're following that car and you're in another 911 and you follow it, mm. when I follow Steve's car, it is, it, is a, it is a beautiful car from the rear. It really does look fantastic with the little air vents and the ducting. And, you know, it really is a beautiful car. In my mind. Yeah, but, when you're mind. Not, but what about when you're stuck in traffic? <laughs> yeah, true, true. <laughs> All right, Ajmal, I think we're done. I think that's over. I think the listeners are saying, you guys finished yet? Well, you have finished. We're finished. That's the end of the podcast. <laughs> um, what else? Sorry, um, I think, I, think we, I make it rambly. No, no, it's good. It's good. We didn't mention, actually, we didn't mention people who haven't listened to the podcast before. Um, if you want to go and uh, follow Ajmal, he's on YouTube at not bus driver, flat cap driver. <laughs> flat cap driver on YouTube. If you do the search, Ajmal will come up. You'll see it. Uh, videos of his Porsche and also on Instagram at the same. 
Um, and while you're on Instagram, go to Porsche Cool and give us a follow as well because trying to get to 20,000 followers, only at 15 at the moment, so we've got 5,000 to go. Let's get to 20. I'll All right, happen, Ajmal. I'll quick. I hope so. All right, Ajmal, thank you. Good to chat. Thanks for thanks well, thank for coming you. on again. I know you've been busy today and I know it's uh, just for the listeners, um, Ajmal's doing this at 2 o'clock in London, so he's taking his lunch break and, and doing the podcast and his yes. lunch break, so to speak. Oh, f- oh no, fuck, I didn't swear. And that's it for today. All right. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Ajmal. We'll Thank talk you. again soon. Thanks, mate. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening. Uh, my name is Michael Bath. This is the Portugal Podcast. And that's it for today. Bye for now.